Today is day 28 and we're reading Genesis 46 and 47. Last time, Joseph discloses his identity. His brothers are absolutely flabbergasted and they're taken back and there's a, the array of emotions that has gripped their heart. Um, but he has assured them that he has their best interest in mind. And so he assigns them the responsibility of going back, getting their dad and gathering all of their possessions and heading back because he will see to it that they're going to be taken care of. And this was the original design of God from the beginning is that the, that God would protect the inheritance and the promise of the seed of Abraham. He promises to, to protect them. He promises to bless them. <clears throat> and um, he tells them to go ahead and get their father and to let him know that he's alive and get ready to move to Egypt. Can you imagine the mixed emotions that must have just not only just surged through uh, Joseph, but also uh, all of his siblings and the anticipation in that journey getting back and uh, being able to tell their father, listen, Joseph is alive. He is not dead. And uh, a mix of both fear and excitement because fear, you know, there's still uncertainty after all that they've done to their brother. Could he rise up with all the power that he has and the authority he has and retaliate? And so there's all these, and you'll see this fear even to the very end of the book of Genesis. They still cannot can. Uh, uh, you know, uh, calm themselves with an awareness that uh, Joseph's not going to take advantage of them. In chapter 46, uh, Israel or Jacob takes his journey. Uh, God meets him as he departs and, uh, and, and, he, and the Bible says that he spoke to him in visions. And so he's hearing from God and God says to him, hey, listen, I'm, I'm going to go down to Egypt with you. In other words, this is my plan and, and uh, you, you have my favor. And uh, he even affirms it with these words to him, says, Joseph will put his hands on your eyes. Now, what, what that really means is that you're going to live and you're going and I'm in this and you're going to get there. And uh, this is a, a term or uh, it's kind of a of, of an endearment term for jo, for a, uh, Jacob because it means that Joseph will be there when you die. He will help close your eyes in death in peace. All is going to be well in this. Joseph is going to be there to continue on uh, this seed. So finally they arrive. Joseph makes ready uh, his chariot. He's in, in all of this anticipation. He gets there where his father he hasn't seen in years and years and years. And think for a moment what that meeting must have been like, both for Joseph and for uh, Jacob. And uh, the Bible says that Joseph fell on his neck and he wept. All of that bent up emotion, all of that that had been suppressed is now coming to the surface. And what a moment that must have been for both of them. A father who thought his son was dead and, and a son who maybe never considered that he might ever see his father again. They're assigned the best uh, of the land of Egypt. Uh, Jacob goes and he meets Pharaoh. And uh, you think of the king of Egypt and, and uh, this uh, Jacob then shares with him, uh, you know, blesses, the Bible actually says he blessed Pharaoh. He blesses Pharaoh. And uh, Joseph too had gone in with uh, Pharaoh and Pharaoh because of his, uh, you can tell he's got a great deal of respect for Joseph and says whatever, give him the best of the land. And, uh, and so all of this shows the hand of God that has been coordinating all of this. It's remarkable uh, the, uh, how much God's divine presence and imprint is in all of this. Then a um, continuation of Joseph's leadership as it talks about his management of the increasing, uh, deepening famine that worsens. And Joseph has a plan and, and you know, they, uh, the land, the people of the land begin to sell their uh, their possessions, their livestock, and finally even themselves, and uh, to the point which Pharaoh then owns everything, and then to he offers seed and uh, a fifth. Uh, you know, if you give a fifth of this back to Pharaoh, then all the rest is yours. Now it's time for Jacob to die. He lives 17 years more in the land of Goshen, and his dying request, remember, what it was take me home, take me back to my homeland. I want to be buried there uh, and uh, because that land is pivotal, okay? They were not to stay in Egypt. That land, the promised land, is a part of the covenant promise. Abraham was connected to that and he wanted to make sure that Joseph in an oath would make sure 
that he would take him back. All of this demonstrates again how much God loves is us, how in control, he's sovereign, he's master and Lord. A Pharaoh can't get in the way of this. Uh, rebellious children can't stop it. Um, uh, hardened hearts can't resist it. God's out to change you and me. He melts hearts, he changes lives. And this is a beautiful story. That's how God uh, can change a person and he can navigate the outcome according to his divine purposes.